it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day seven of my 2024 Valentine card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawns, a Waffle Lot, and the Scent with Love add-on. So I've stamped those images out on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm going to start with my waffles and I wanted those to be a nice rich golden shade so I went with YR20, YR21, and YR23. First I'm just going to shade the entire waffle as a whole and then I will go back and do the individual little squares. So I'm using that YR23 to add a little bit of shadow on both of my waffles and also on the waffle crumbs that are off to the right and then blending out with the YR21, and then using the YR20 for a nice highlight at the top. Then I'm going to add in E55 to this combo and start adding a little shading down in the bottom left corner of each of those little squares to make them look extra toasty. Also adding a little extra shadow into the corners makes those little squares look recessed as they would be on a traditional Belgian waffle. So once I have the E55 laid in, I'm blending that out with the YR23 and then I will go in with the YR21 and then I'm going to leave any little bit of space that remains in that top right corner for an extra little bit of highlight from that original layer of color. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second waffle, just so they look the same. So it's definitely an extra step to color in each of the individual squares, but I think it's totally worth it because it really brings those waffles to life. I happen to love Belgian waffles. My boys actually got me a Belgian waffle maker for Christmas a couple years ago, and we like to pull it out on special occasions and have a nice big family breakfast. We're big on brunch in our family. So anytime that we are all off and you know having a celebration, it's the perfect time to make Belgian waffles. Next I'm going to work on my strawberries and I'm going to use some pinky red shades. I'm using R22, R24, and R29. Starting with a little of that R29, then blending out with the R24, and then I'll use the R22 for the highlight. Um, I also included a few of the chocolate covered strawberries from the Scent with Love add-on. We also really love chocolate covered strawberries in our family and I thought it would tie in nicely with um, where I'm going with these images so you'll see that in just a minute. But I'm going to do the strawberry caps. I'm going to use YG11 and YG17 for those. I'm just using the two shades on those since they are quite small. So I just started with the YG17 and then I'm blending with the YG11. Then for my blueberries, I'm going to use some dusty blue tones. I think those work really well for blueberries. So I grabbed B95, B97, and B99. And I'm using the B99 first for a little bit of shadow, blending out with the B97. And then I started blending out with the B95, but it wasn't quite light enough for me. So I decided to switch out the B95 for the B93 and just finish off my blueberries with that. Gave me a little extra highlight, which I really liked on those blueberries. So in our family, our favorite way to eat Belgian waffles is with fresh berries, usually strawberries, blueberries, sometimes raspberries, depending, and Nutella. So um, that's why I decided to do the chocolate brown shades for what would normally be the syrup in these images. And I'm actually going to turn it into Nutella that we just spread right over the waffles and then we add our berries on top. So for that, I'm using E44, E47, and E49 because I really wanted those rich dark shades so it really looks like chocolate. So I started with the E49 for the shadows and then blended out with the E47 
and then I'll use that E44 for a highlight and I'm going to do the chocolate on my chocolate covered strawberries with the same shades just to tie in the whole concept together and I think that looks really fun and definitely delicious. And then I will trim out these images with their matching dies. So the next thing I want to create is a plate to put all of my breakfast items on. So I'm taking one of the stitched circle stackables and one of the circle stackables and taping those into place on one sheet of white cardstock, running those through my die cutting machine. I made sure that the stitched circle was just slightly larger than the non-stitched circle. So those are going to come together to form my plate. So I'll take my glue tube and just add a little bit behind that. I'm going to make sure to go right up to the edges on that first circle so that it lays nice and flat on the back of the plate and looks more cohesive. And I'll just smooth that down into place. Then to make it look a bit more realistic and not quite so flat, I'm going to add a bit of shading using my Copics. I'm going to use C0 and C1 to add a little bit of a ring around the center portion of the plate, and then I'll also do that on the outer portion of the plate. So I'm using the C1 first and just kind of doing like a half moon shape or a backward C making a little bit of a heavier shadow on the right hand side and then a little bit of a lighter shadow on the left just by starting with the C1 on the right and then blending that out with the C0 and continuing with the C0 down the left side of the plate. So it's just a little bit of something barely there. And then I did grab my colorless blender to just smooth that C0 into the rest of the white cardstock. And then I'll just set the plate aside for now. And next I want to create a napkin. So I'm going to take the blue gingham piece of pattern paper from the fruit salad six by six pad, tear that out. And I am going to try to make a, a napkin that is gonna sit behind my plate or it could be a placemat, but I want it to look layered. So I'm actually gonna take one of the stitched hillside borders and trim off the top edge of the piece of pattern paper that I've trimmed down into a square so that it gives it kind of like a wavy look, just gives it a bit of movement. Then I'll take one of the other stitch hillside borders and trim down the left hand side so that also looks a bit ruffled. And then I'm going to take another small rectangle piece and it's going to get layered behind this one. And you'll see how that comes together in just a little bit. But for now, I am going to take a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock that I've trimmed it down with the largest of the outside in stitch rectangle stackables. And I'm going to add some Distress Oxide ink to the center of that. I'm using some spun sugar and I'm going to take that almost all the way to the edges because a lot of the center portion of the card is going to get covered up. So I want to make sure that that color is showing on all four sides. So I'm just going to keep blending that on until I have a look that I like. I did want to keep the color nice and soft though. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to do some splatter detail first with some plain water. Just adding that to an acrylic block and then tapping it off the side with a thin paintbrush to get small droplets. And then I let that soak into the paper for a few seconds and then blotted it up with a paper towel. Then I'm going to add some of that sponge sugar to the block and mix it with the water that is already there. I did have to add a little extra as well because it wasn't quite as fluid as I wanted it to be. And I splattered some of that. And then to darken up those splatters, I'm going to bring in some Kitsch Flamingo, add a little bit of water to that as well, and then I'll splatter that all over the background, making sure that some of that gets in all four corners. And then once I'm happy with how this is looking, I'm going to set this panel aside to dry. I also want to add some definition to the edges of my napkin, so I'm going to bring in chipped sapphire 
and bring that in on the corners and sides where it's going to show. So I'm just adding a thin layer of that just so that it creates a little bit of extra depth and really makes this napkin look layered up. And I left the right hand side and the bottom straight to look like that's the folded edge. So I was checking to see how those were going to work together. I was happy with that, but I did want to add a little definition to the right hand side as well. Next, I'm going to work on the main part of my sentiment. So I'm taking Finley's ABCs and just choosing the letters that I want, taping those in place on a piece of Moonstone cardstock with a little bit of post-it tape and I'm spelling out two words and then I will run this through my die cut machine. And luckily this phrase only repeated one letter, the H, so that's the only one that I had to run through my die cutting machine an additional time to have the whole phrase trimmed out. So once I do, it's going to say whole brunch. And then I'm also going to take a piece of guava cardstock and use one of the stitched heart stackables to trim out the smallest one. Then I wanted to add a bit of color to my die cuts, so I have taped those down onto a piece of scrap white cardstock. And I'm going to use the same shades that I used on my blueberries to just add a bit of like an ombre effect to my letters. I started with the B99 down at the bottom, and then I'm blending up with the B97. And just having the letters all taped down in a row like this makes it really nice and quick and easy to do rather than having to color each individual letter and hold it down one by one. So then I brought in B95 and I'm just bringing that up even further. And then I'm actually going to skip over the B93 and go straight to the B91 because I wanted this to kind of fade into that Moonstone cardstock. So I'm just going to take that up so that about half of the letter is colored with Copics, maybe slightly more than half, I guess. But the top part is still just the plain cardstock. Then I'm going to bring in the heart and give that the same treatment using some of the colors that I used on my strawberries. This time I started with the R24 though and then blended out with the R22 and then I'll add a little bit of R21 to kind of just soften it into the guava cardstock. For the rest of my sentiment, I'm going to pop the rest of that Moonstone cardstock scrap into my Misty, and I am going to stamp in Forget Me Not ink, and I'm actually going to mask off part of my sentiment from A Waffle Lot. It says, I like you, A Waffle Lot, and I am masking off the end part of that phrase with a little bit of post-it tape, stamping it down twice so it's nice and bold. And then I will pop my card base in my Misty so that I can stamp on the inside. I'm using ballet slippers, cardstock, and bubblegum ink. And I'm stamping out the waffle that has the bite out of it, plus the crumbs, and a strawberry, and the sentiment that says, you're waffly cute, which I love a good pun. So this one's right up my alley. So now that I have all of my elements together, I'm ready to start assembling. I'm going to take my background piece and glue that to the front of my card base, making sure I have the same amount of that Ballet Slippers cardstock showing on all four sides. And then I'm going to glue that extra piece of that gingham pattern paper to the main piece so that it looks like a folded napkin. And then I can glue that to my card front. And then I have taken the plate and added some foam tape to the back of that. So I'm gonna peel off those release papers and pop that up on the center of the napkin. But once I had that down, I realized that I did not leave myself enough room for my sentiment down at the bottom. So I did immediately pull that back up and thankfully I didn't tear too much, just a little bit of that Bristol 
uh, cardstock, but that's fine. I'm going to cover it right back up. I'm just going to shift everything up just slightly. So the napkin will go a little bit high of center, and then I'll put the plate back down in the center once again. And then I can bring in my images and my letters and also the rest of my sentiment, which I trimmed down with one of the everyday sentiment banners. I use the smallest one. So I'm going to add that to the top of the card with some foam tape and then use my Cutter B Teflon coated scissors to trim off any excess. Then I'll add the heart right underneath the plate in the center of the lower section. And then I will start adding in my sentiment. So I'm using my EK Success reverse tweezers to add those letters. And at first I skipped the O because I wasn't sure if I was going to add it or just use the heart as the O in the word whole. But the heart was a little bit larger than the letters. And so I ultimately decided that I did want to have the O in there, I just decided to layer it right on top of the heart. And then I will spell out the rest of that word right next to it. Got a little bit too much glue there under that L, but I just dabbed it up with my finger while it was still wet and was able to remove that. So once I have that word on there, I can start with the bottom word. And because it is one letter longer, I wanted to make sure that I would have that spaced out correctly. So I laid out the letters so I would have a general idea of where they were going. And then I could start to glue those down as well. And I worked my way back to front, starting with the H and then ending with the B. So I'm adding those letters down at the very bottom, kind of using that stitching detail from that panel as a guideline and lining them up right on top of that. So they will slightly cover up the bottoms of the word above it, but I think because I added that dark ombre, it really makes it clear what the phrase says, which is, I like you a whole brunch. So like I said, I love puns, so I just thought this one would be a fun one. Once I have the sentiment taken care of, I'm going to start working on my plate and rearranging my little waffles on there. I wanted to have them just slightly overlapping in the center. So I glued down the one with the bite out of it first toward the top right hand side. And then the whole waffle is gonna to go toward the bottom left. And now I'm just looking for those little crumbs and I'm using my reverse tweezers again, just because they're super tiny um, to help me adhere those down into place. Next, I'm going to take my Nutella spread and add that to the center of each waffle. And I made sure that I had the dark part of the shading kind of down toward the same part. So they're kind of going in the same direction. And I did that with the shading at the bottom of the waffles as well. Then I'm going to add in my berries. I'm adding one strawberry and then the little trio of blueberries onto my whole waffle. And then I'll do two strawberries and another trio of the blueberries on the second waffle, just so that they're not identical. And I was just careful about how I placed those because I wanted to make sure you could still see some of that Nutella showing. I didn't want to cover it up completely. Then I'll take my chocolate covered strawberries and add those around the waffles on the plate. I had a little more room toward the top of the plate than I did on the bottom. So I added two strawberries up at the top, kind of layered over top of each other. And then I'll add the last little trio of blueberries down at the bottom. Then I have all these tiny little hearts that I saved from a different Valentine card that I recently made using the quilted heart backdrop portrait. And I used the background on that card, but I saved all the tiny little hearts that the die trimmed out because they make perfect little embellishments. 
So I'm actually going to use six of them on this card. I just added a tiny dab of glue where I wanted those hearts to go. And then I'm picking those up with my embellishment wand and just setting them down into place. And my last one accidentally flipped over, so I just had to get it going face up, and then I could set that in the glue as well and use the back end of the tool to make sure that they were on there straight. So to finish this card off, I wanted to add a little bit of a white gel pen detail to the chocolate. So I'm just doing some little lines and dots to indicate the look of a shiny texture. Some places I'll do two dots, sometimes I just do one, sometimes I change the direction that it's going, just depending, and um, just make those look nice and glossy. And then I'm going to take some Stardust Stickles and add a little bit of that to all of my strawberries, just a touch of it so that it catches the light when you tip the card. And I'll also add a little bit of that to each of the letters that make up the bottom part of my sentiment, just putting it where the darkest shading is. I think that's where it shows up the best, and it just will add a little extra something. And that is going to finish up this card, so I will lift it up into the light so you can see all of that detail a little bit closer and hopefully catch some of that sparkle and shine and give you another peek at the inside as well. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give it a like and leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And if you'd like to watch it again, this will also be on the Lawn Fawn blog and YouTube channel today. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do so. All of the products that I used today will be listed and linked for you in the description bar below in case you'd like to pick up anything for yourself. And I will also put up day seven of the previous two years of Valentine card series right here on screen in case you'd like to keep watching. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you had a good one and I'll see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.